Why is the greatest young talent we have ever seen since LeBron James also one of the biggest targets for disrespect in the entire NBA? In his second, third, fourth, and fifth seasons, Luka Doncic was named first team all NBA every year, a historic feat matched only by Tim Duncan and Larry Bird. But Luka has often been compared to superstars who put up empty numbers instead of being given the throne as the next all time great. And then you have Luka over here who's compared to Michael Jordan, and he's James. Harden. Can he say he's better than James Harden at scoring? Can't even do that. You can't even argue that he's a better scorer than James Harden in that same category. The Luka vs. James Harden comparison at the age of 24 is not a comparison. Luka is averaging 8.5 more points per game, 3.7 more assists per game, and 4.5 more rebounds per game. James Harden eventually raised his stats to an MVP level. Luka is already there. So the question is, why is the media hating on a literal superstar? A month ago, ESPN posted a video asking, why don't players want to play with Luka Doncic and the Mavericks? And the replies were brutal. The blatant Luka slander is crazy. Luka and the Mavs spanked Shea in the Thunder two days ago, but y'all were quiet. ESPN's issue with European players needs to be studied. So while the public is on Luka's side, the media is against him. And what makes this even more strange is that Jokic, a European player himself, has been immune to this while Luka has suffered all of the hate. According to the odds to end this year, Luka has absolutely a zero chance to win the MVP while Jokic is about to win his third, but why is this not more of a conversation? Does the media actually hate Luka? Pouts, he whines, he he moans. The Mavericks have 50 wins to the Nuggets, 56. And comparing their stats, Luka's 33.9 points, 9.8 assists, and 9.2 rebounds per game are similar, if not better, than Nikola Jokic with less rebounds, but slightly more assists and over seven more points per game. The Nuggets are defending champions, but they are also not a clear-cut dominant regular season team like the Celtics. The Mavericks have had a roster that have seen many, many changes, including a ton at this year's trade deadline. They are a roster full of role players beyond Luka and Kyrie Irving. Somehow, it's as if voters already have MVP fatigue for Luka before he's even won the award, as if his extreme success at a young age is being counted against him. What does Luka need to do to turn around this hate to get the voters' attention? Well, he is currently on a revenge spree. What's up, Mike here, and one month ago, the Dallas Mavericks were in shambles. On March 5th of this very season, the Mavericks had just lost five of their last six games and panic was setting in. As it was said by the Mavs front office last summer that Luka may request a trade this summer if things did not get better in Dallas. And on March 5th, they had just a 34 and 28 record, were likely going to play in the play-in game, and their defense was absolutely awful. But before we continue, guys, I wanna thank Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. Because if you're like me, you probably are saving up for something. I personally am saving up to buy a house. And also, if you're like me, you want to be more on top of your expenses. Luckily, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is the app that you need to save more and manage your money better. With Rocket Money, you are going to be able to finally achieve financial freedom. Personally, I love using Rocket Money to cancel unwanted subscriptions and to lower my bills. I also use it to set my own budget. That way, I'm able to analyze my spending habits, make sure I'm not going over my budget, and again, be saving the money I want. And guys, there's really no downside here because Rocket Money is hooking us up. If you use my link, it'll be on the screen and in the description down below. Rocket Money is offering you a free trial to get started. So there's no better time to get started than now. Take control of your finances today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash Corzemba to get started for free. Thank you again to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get back into that video. The criticism at this point was just growing stronger and stronger. Lucas 73 point game was even completely discounted by Stephen A. Smith and ESPN instead chose to attack the Hawks without giving Luka any credit at all. What transpired last night in Atlanta was disgraceful. If, if everybody can score 70, then how special is it? The Hawks, you should be ashamed of your damn self. You really should. As a team, Dallas was middle of the pack at this point. Their offensive rating was 8th, but their defensive rating was just 22nd, giving them a net rating of 16th. However, in spite of this criticism, perhaps because of this criticism, 
criticism. Dallas banded together and caught fire at the exact right moment, directly headed into the NBA playoffs, and they've done so in the most unlikely of ways. As while their offensive rating has jumped up to sixth during a 16 and two stretch, their net rating has jumped all the way to tied for first with the Boston Celtics. And get this, their defensive rating has been the clear cut leader in the entire NBA. Before this stretch, the Mavericks defense was their biggest point of concern, but the addition of Daniel Gafford, along with the emergence of rookie Derek Lively have changed everything for the Mavericks. Yes, everyone has played their part, specifically Dante Exum as a wing defender has been excellent, but it is Gafford who has been an absolute monster. The Mavericks were able to trade with the Washington Wizards to get Daniel Gafford, and since then, on offense, he leads the entire league in true shooting percentage. He's 10th in offensive rebound percentage, 7th in blocks per game, and 4th in blocks percentage, and he is first out of everyone in offensive rating. Gafford is the perfect player for Dallas on both ends of the floor. He knows his role. He is a pick and roll, dive to the rim big, who just finishes around the basket at an extremely high rate, while also creating second chances for his teammates and locking it down on defense. Derek Lively does not qualify for these stat leaderboards, but if he did, he would actually rank ahead of Gafford by a slight amount in true shooting percentage and both. Both Gafford and Lively have provided the Mavs with great rim defense as opponents are shooting minus 6% on shots at the rim versus Gafford and minus 5.2% against Lively. Dallas finally has the perfect center combo for a Luka run offense, but as we know, the hate has always been there for Luka, especially after the Kristaps Porzingis and Jalen Brunson situations. Many in the media have questioned whether Luka can play with another star. Should players want to play with Luka? No. I'm starting to think no. If you were to think of a teammate who would not fit with Luka Doncic, it would be the ball dominant, ISO scoring, has had some problems with his teammates in the past, Kyrie Irving. But not only have Luka and Kyrie seemingly loved each other, as just recently against the Rockets, the two walked arm in arm with smiles off the court. So connected on both ends, and then you got Luka sprinting the court to pick up his running mate. And in post-game press conferences, Kyrie and Luka have had nothing but good things to say about each other. We all knew how special this year was going to be based on what Luca was doing and really initiating himself into that leadership role. His stats speak for themselves. Me as a brother of his, I, I have love and support to give him. There is also a great reason for this. Luca has proven he can take the criticism and has gone out of his way to be a leader and to make Kyrie comfortable and the results have been tremendous. Taking a look at Luca and Kyrie's two-man duo stats compared to his and Jalen Brunson's, we find that the pair of Luca and Kyrie shoot tremendously better on the court together. They turn the ball over much less and they generate a lot more points. Compared to Luka and Porzingis, there is no comparison. As Porzingis was traded in 2022 after the pair did not fit at all and we can see why in 2021. Luka and Porzingis ranked 9th out of 10th in field goal percentage, points per possession, and turnovers. They were not a fit, but now everything has changed with Kyrie Irving and that could mean big things for this year's playoffs. Because Luka has proven to us already that he steps up directly after he is doubted Slash hated. In the 2022 season, Luca was straight up fat shamed. A professional athlete is out of shape. You know what? Looking in the mirror like, damn. Got an extra one of these. He's not in great shape. You got to go full on pizza and, and beer to get like that. To get that far out of shape, you got to really try. You are back. You are back. You are back. Luca would respond to this directly, telling the media he had put on too much weight after playing in the Olympics that summer, which led to him taking a break. But after that same season, where he was fat shamed and also caught all of the heat for not being able to play with Porzingis, the Mavericks, without Porzingis and with Luca leading the way, heavily, made it to their first Western Conference Finals since 2011 when Dirk and the Mavs won the entire NBA championship. Can you sense a theme here? When Luka is hated, the man responds. The Phoenix Suns were even directly hating on Luka in the Western Conference Semifinals. These were just some of the antics the Suns were pulling, and it seemed like they were about to work. Phoenix did take a 3-2 series lead, but Luka would walk off the court down 3-2, saying, Down 3-2, it was Luka who was doing the trash talk. As in game six, he put up a big time performance while leading the Mavs to a 27 point blowout win. And then he'd follow that up in game seven while laughing, dancing, possibly ruining Chris Paul's
basketball's last chance at an NBA championship. The Suns as a franchise have still not recovered as they are either going to be the sixth seed this season or play in the play-in game. And that is perhaps the most important thing about all of the hate and all of the disrespect Luka has received so far in his young career, his response. If Luka is going to rise up and place himself in the same category of a Michael Jordan or LeBron James type, a young player on the path to be one of the greatest to ever do it, Luka needs to have the mentality to not only play through the hate, but to use it as fuel and to get revenge. We need to remember, before Michael Jordan won his first title, a lot of people said Mike would never win a title ever because he scored too much. He didn't get his teammates involved enough. Nobody could win a championship with that style of isolation play. Mike would respond with six rings. Looking at LeBron, by the time LeBron became a young superstar, the narrative had completely flipped, which tells us a lot about the media. Now, the media was saying LeBron passed too much in the clutch, that he didn't have the Michael Jordan gene, and that this would keep him from ever winning a title. Both of these takes seem absurd after we watched Jordan and LeBron's careers play out, but they were very real at the time, and now Luka is facing his own criticism, that he's too ball dominant, that players don't want to play with him, that he's too fat. However, this is where things are about to get very interesting. The Western Conference this season is wide open, and in terms of pure numbers, Luka is in the same category as Mike and LeBron. Yes, he is missing an MVP, but in years two through six, assuming Luka finishes with another first team All-NBA, which is a safe assumption to make as he is second in MVP voting, Luka will have one more first team All-NBA than Mike and two more than LeBron during that same stretch in their careers. In terms of stats, Luka does have slightly less points per game than Mike, but he has more rebounds and assists per game in years two through six than both Mike and LeBron. He also has a better effective field goal percentage, and again, we need to remember, Michael Jordan did not win a playoff series until his fourth season. He did not win a title until his seventh. LeBron would make the NBA Finals in year four, but it wasn't until year nine that LeBron won his first ring. Before those titles, the hate kept building up on the two goats of basketball because people love to hate on greatness. And so we are going to soon find out, is Luka Doncic truly great? Can Luka take that leap in the playoffs and begin to carve out his own path as one of the all-time greats? The Mavericks will be playing the Clippers in round one, and Luka immediately has a chance for revenge. As the Clippers took down Luka in the first round of both the 2020 and 2021 playoffs, and if there's one thing we all can agree on, nobody wants to play a team that is this red hot in the playoffs. Luka is going to finish this year as the only player ever to average at least 33 points, 9 assists, and 9 rebounds per game. Dallas has their superstar, they have their second star in place, and their roster is cooking. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications, that way you never miss a video in the future. If you did enjoy this video and you're interested in the NBA offseason, we recently made a video on why the Lakers might make a game-changing move, or maybe you want to know about why Isaiah Thomas was done dirty and about his rise and fall. Thank you for everyone who's already subscribed and watching, you're awesome, we all know it, and as always, have an awesome day. Peace.